A year ago, I managed to land myself a job working at a school. I've been working in the cleaning industry for about four years now, mainly cleaning banks. However, I figured working in a high school wouldn't be too different. You see, kind of a scrub. I flunked out of college and my parents booted me out of the house because of it. Calculus, too, is what did me in. Well, that and natty ice nights. I mean, but talk about the pot calling the kettle black, though. My mom never even made it to college. I love her, but damn, she was a hard ass. I have to admit one thing did worry me about working at a school, especially since this job was at a high school and dealing with teenagers. Some of them are not necessarily known for being kind and tolerant. I'm sure there are some good ones out there. I was one of those, but when they're bad, they're bad. So when I was told I'd be working after the classes had finished, I was pretty happy about it. The job was rather calm, I have to admit. When I arrived, I would simply go look for Victor, who was the high school's primary janitor who worked after hours. Sometimes he would stay overnight there, sleeping in the boiler room. Victor would give me instructions on what to do, and then I would get on with it. Victor looked something straight out of Nosferatu. You know that tall skinny dude with a bald head? Kind of gray complexion? It's like real Max Shrek kind of shit right there. But he was a nice guy though. He had been working as a janitor at the school for the last 17 years. He was a perfectionist. He was also very, very quiet. Aside from giving me instructions, he never really talked to me much, not even when I tried to engage in conversation. When I first started, he basically told me to get on with it quickly. And when it was 7pm, if I hadn't left yet, he would come look for me and tell me just to leave it as it is and come back another day to finish up. I assumed it was because if I stayed there any longer, they'd have to pay me the extra hours. Each day, my job would be different. Sometimes I had to clean some classrooms, other times the hallways. Even though there were more cleaning staff aside from Victor and I, we only crossed paths a few times during our shifts because each person would focus on a different area each day. This wasn't a problem at all for me. One Friday morning, I got a phone call from the school. I was quite surprised because they never really called me. If someone ever called me, it was Victor and I definitely never got a call in the morning. When I answered, it was the school principal, Janine, telling me that Victor had a stroke earlier in the morning. Apparently, this happened by the time some school staff had already arrived, so he was lucky there was someone there to help him. They managed to get him to the hospital in time, so thankfully he survived, but he was still quite delicate. I was asked then by Janine whether it was possible for me to just not be there that day or Saturday, but to go in on Monday and have a chat instead. And so on Monday, when I saw Janine, she told me that Victor was out of intensive care, but he was still weak as he was struggling with the mobility on his right side and would need therapy and time to heal. And so therefore, Victor was going to move with his daughter. Carmen, and her family for the time being. Janine then offered me Victor's job. It was pretty sweet. I mean, I gotta admit, I'd make more money while having a place to stay in the boiler room. I was going to make bank, and because Janine, the hot principal, was going to let me sleep on Victor's cot as long as I would report anything strange happening at night. I was a bit hesitant. But when I heard I was going to be paid four extra dollars for each hour after 7 p.m. and before 6 a.m., I got super excited. I mean, cash is king after all. And if I wanted a second shot at college and a home life with my family, well, I would need it. The funny thing is that I never actually had been to the boiler room before. Victor only told me about it. Janine gave me the keys and I went and grabbed my belongings from my car. When I opened the boiler room door, I was immediately met by the smell of Febreze. It was so overpowering, it almost made me sick. 
I could even tell it was Caribbean paradise. It had been sprayed around everywhere. Once I could get past the smell and finally entered the room, I went down the small set of staircases. So, basically, the boiler room was sort of like a basement. Once after entering the room, you had this set of stairs about 10 steps, and then there was the rest of the room. It was rather nice for a basement, to be honest. I could tell the floor and the walls had been done in recent years. The place was very clean. So during the first two weeks, I just simply guided the cleaning staff who was there until 7pm, and then once they left, I'd do some cleaning here and there, and then just organize things in my room. I'll admit, things were very chill until 7, but once the cleaning staff left, I felt slightly creeped out. Now, I've never been one to be scared easily or anything, but being in a huge school all by yourself for so many hours each night can definitely feel a little spooky. And if I'm honest, during the first month, once the cleaning staff left at 7, I would just make sure everything around was closed, and then I'd go straight back to my room and stay there the whole night. I mean, after all, I had my very own bathroom and a microwave. I knew that if I saw or heard someone trying to break in, of course I would go check it out and call the police, but I just didn't see the point in walking around the school for hours like an idiot. And plus now I was technically living there, I always made sure everything got cleaned up earlier on. And so one evening about two months later, I was talking to Chris, he's a dude my age who had been working as an afternoon cleaner for about three months now. Chris and I never had the chance to socialize before, but now we've begun to talk. So after the shift ended, I asked him if he wanted to have a beer before going home. We had a couple of cans of beer and ate pizza while talking about life in the staff lounge. And soon after 9pm, Chris decided it was time to go, so we headed towards the south entry to let him go out that way. Now, it would have been easier to let him go through the front door because we were near the north entrance, but I decided it was better just to let him exit by the south, because that way he was closer to the parking lot, and also, I'd be closer to the boiler room as well. That, and, well, we were drinking on school grounds. I, I wasn't supposed to have beer or anything mind-altering there. When we did get to the south entrance... I opened up the door for him, and I stayed there, and I watched him walk up to the parking lot. As Chris was opening his car door, and I waved goodbye at him, he suddenly looked worried. I asked what was going on, and then he just ran at me. I thought I saw a girl behind you, he said. A girl? I asked. Yeah, she might have been a student or something. Well, what the hell was she doing? I asked him. Well, she was just there, standing, but... Then I... Well, I guess she's not there anymore. I don't know, man. I might have just been imagining it, I guess. Maybe I had too many beers, he said. Are you sure you're not drunk, dude? I mean, do you need help? I asked him. No, I'm sure. It must have been my eyes tricking me, he said before turning around and walking back to his car. He did seem to be fine, so I let him get into the car. However, part of me began to wonder if maybe he did see something. I tried to think whether I should go and check the school, but then thought there was no way in hell whoever Chris saw had actually entered the school building, so I just let it go. Now, Three nights later, I was feeling very hungry, but I didn't want to have anything from the microwave or the mini fridge in my room so I decided to go and cook something in the school staff kitchen. It was about 9.30 at night. I walked all the way from my room to the staff lounge calmly, while also taking a moment to check on things. Everything around looked safe and secure. One thing to mention is the school was always lit, even during nighttime, so it was easy to spot anything out of the ordinary. After finished cooking my food and eating, I decided to head back to my room, and as I was leaving the room, I looked around, and I saw a girl. 
She was somewhere between 14 to 16 years old. She was standing on the other side of the hallway. I could only see her briefly because by the time I properly raised my face to look at her, she had run away. From what I could see, the girl was about 5 foot 3. She looked normal, I guess. Uh, I mean, all I could immediately notice was that she was wearing a green hoodie with jeans and had long black hair. Now I tried to run as fast in the direction I saw her going while screaming. What the hell are you doing in here? But by the time I reached the hallway, she ran to where I couldn't see her. Now, I could have just checked every classroom, but I decided to grab my phone and call the police informing them that someone had trespassed on school property, since that was the protocol. The police arrived around 10 minutes later. I opened up the door for them and the two officers that arrived and I began looking for the girl. We looked all over the property for a long time, but we couldn't find her. Eventually, the police said she must have left the building already and told me to call them if I needed them again. Now, I must admit, I felt quite embarrassed. I tried to put my mind at ease, thinking it's normal for some teenagers to break into school at times to do pranks, but then it hit me once again. This girl I saw must have been the girl that Chris saw which made me think perhaps this girl is some sort of student who's having troubles at home. I thought that maybe next time if I saw her, if she ever did show up again, I would be kind and try to ask if she's okay or needs anything before calling anybody. So, the next day, I actually decided to purposely wander around the building, hoping I would meet the troubled girl and help her out. I decided to leave my room at midnight, and I walked around the school, checking every single classroom. As I was approaching the science lab, I was feeling super uneasy. But not just uneasy necessarily because I was scared shitless, but because I felt like I was being observed. Nevertheless, every time I tried to look back, I couldn't see anything. So I decided to enter the science lab briefly, and then a few seconds later, opened the door again to see if the girl was indeed following me. Effectively, just as I carried on with my plan and opened the door, I saw the young girl standing in front of the door. This time, I could see her better. She was indeed a teenager, I don't know, 14 or 16 maybe, with very pale skin and dark long hair, with bangs almost covering her eyes. I noticed the girl seemed to look scared, and as soon as she saw me, she tried to run away again. Now I ran and I tried to follow her and asked if I could help her. I told her we could call her parents, the police, or whoever she needed. But when I said this, the young girl just kind of disappeared in a shadow right in front of my damn eyes. At that moment, I had to stop and look in every direction. I rubbed my eyes and even pinched my skin to see if I was dreaming, but no. And this is when I thought, just maybe, I was seeing something unnatural. Something I shouldn't be seeing. I really don't believe in ghosts, but where the hell could she have gone? I ran to my room, and I fucking locked that door. I then laid my ass in bed and stayed there the whole night with the lights on staring at the ceiling, until finally, I fell asleep. Next day, I managed to sleep through the day, but when the night came, I was too afraid of leaving the room. I didn't leave my room for a week after the afternoon cleaning staff left for the evening. I was so scared shitless, I didn't even know if I could continue there. I decided that the only way to try not to be scared was to investigate. So I asked some of the daytime cleaning staff if they had ever seen or heard anything. Some of them said no, while a couple answered that they have heard about a girl haunting the school halls at night. 
However, none of the cleaning staff knew where the story came from. Now at some point, I found myself talking to one of the teachers. Her name was Mrs. Field. And when I asked Mrs. Field if she had heard or seen anything random in the school, she froze for a second and asked me if I'd seen a teenage girl around the hallways. When she did this, I opened my eyes as big as I could and nodded. You've seen Heather, she said. When I asked her who the hell Heather was, she went on to tell me the story. She said in the late 80s there was a student named Heather McGraw. Heather was a shy student who sometimes was the target of school bullies. One day, Heather never arrived at school. However, they didn't notice this until she didn't go home that evening. She was reported missing later that night, and they looked for her all over the place and asked lots of people about her. Nobody had seen Heather that day, aside from her parents who saw her in the morning before leaving for school. When they asked Heather's bullies, three girls named Margaret, Stephanie, and Clarissa, and Margaret's boyfriend Dylan, his friend Tyson, well... They all acted very strange according to police, but they never gave any information or confessed anything. They also didn't find any evidence strong enough to incriminate them, so nothing happened. Heather was never found. However, many years after she had gone missing, some school staff members said they had seen Heather around the school. They said Heather would look at them or chase them, but when approached, she would escape or vanish. Mrs. Fields claimed to have seen Heather many years ago. She was scared shitless when it happened. So now she just never stays in school past 5 o'clock. She claims that Heather appearing at night and the school directors knowing about it is what led to our school to be the only one in the state without extracurricular activities. So. So. I was astonished after hearing this information. I was even more shocked because I just learned this was common knowledge after almost a year of working there. So the next day I confronted the principal, Janine, you know, the hot one, about Heather. Janine looked shy. Look, I know she appears from time to time, but she's harmless. Victor had been working during the night many years now, and he's okay. You've been here for a few months and nothing has happened to you, she said, trying to justify not telling me about the ghost of Heather. Meanwhile, she was winking at me and smiling. Doesn't matter, I'll get on with the story. You see, the thing is, there were only two things to do. One, quit my job, or two, continue on peacefully as Victor did. But this is when it hit me. I needed to try to find what Victor did so that he could live without Heather bothering him. So I called his daughter, Carmen, because Victor still couldn't talk all that much. Listen, Carmen, I'm sorry for calling you about something so crazy, but I just need to talk to you about something. I just want to know if your father... Alright, this is going to sound crazy, but has your father ever told you about... I said before Victor's daughter interrupted me and said, About Heather? After I confirmed this is what I wanted to talk about, Carmen said that her father had never seen Heather, because Heather only appears to those who believe in ghosts, or those she feels confident enough to appear to. I didn't believe in ghosts, so I guess she felt confident to appear to me. She claimed that although her dad was good, he was not very tolerant nor sweet. He was more of a grumpy man who wasn't afraid of anything, and in all of his years, he was never bothered by the ghost of Heather. However, Carmen claimed that she had seen Heather a couple of times in the past when she visited her dad during the night. Carmen then gave me some solid advice. Maybe Heather is trying to tell people something. Maybe she needs someone to listen to her. Maybe she's trying to tell us something about her death so that she can finally rest in peace. 
Carmen was very religious and, well, she was very spiritual as well. But you know what? Her words really hit home. And so I decided to follow her advice. I wanted to try to help Heather. The next day I decided to walk around the school again, hoping to see her. However, she was not appearing even after I already walked almost twice around the whole damn school. So, I decided just to stand my ass in the hallway, try to talk to her hoping that she'd appear. Hey, Heather? God, this is stupid. I, I know your story now and well, I feel like there's maybe something you want to tell me? I said aloud, not even believing a word I was saying. Just... Tell me where you are. I want to help you rest in peace. I continued on. I felt like an idiot. I mean, I'm going to be honest. But after trying to talk to her for about three minutes, I looked behind me and holy hell. Heather, she scared the shit out of me. She was standing there right behind me. This creepy ass kid. Now, she didn't say anything. Hell, I must have jumped three feet. But she began to walk away. However, this time, instead of disappearing, she looked at me as if she was telling me to follow her ass. I decided to walk behind her as she guided me through the school. Keep in mind, this is my third time walking around this huge-ass school. I'm not in any good shape. But eventually... We went down to a basement nearby the south entry, so it wasn't extremely far from my own room. This room had spare chairs and desks, just tables and crap everywhere. Heather walked up to the wall and then touched it. And suddenly, after touching the wall, she disappeared. However, I think just right then and there, I knew what I needed to know. The following day, while I went up, I talked to Janine. I kind of wanted to see her anyway. I asked her to please join me in that room. Once we were both in there, I asked her when the last time that room or that wall had been remodeled. Janine said that it probably hadn't been remodeled or had any renovations since the late 80s. As soon as she said this, both of us looked at each other. The last time that room was renovated was the time when Heather disappeared. Now that very same day, Janine called some guys to come in and demolish the wall. Janine and I stayed there watching the whole time. Eventually, after about two and a half hours, we made a very, very grim discovery. It was Heather's remains. The guys that were demolishing the walls instantly became ill and started to vomit. Janine began to cry and, well, I immediately called the police. Eventually they came and after the school day ended, they took the remains to try to confirm it was Heather's. Finally be able to notify her parents. Now that very night, something very unexpected happened. All of Heather's bullies passed away. Margaret and Dylan, who was her husband, and had also been investigated about Heather's disappearance, were found dead in the morning. Heart attacks. Stephanie passed away that night from food poisoning. And when ex-friends of both of them decided to call Clarissa, who lived far across the country. They found out that she had been in a car accident. They all had passed away from 3 to 3.15 in the morning, which was bizarre. All of Heather's suspected killers, who were going to be investigated once again after years, were killed the same damn night that we found her remains. This wasn't a coincidence at all. Now, two days later, police confirmed the remains were Heather's. They also came up with the possible conclusion that Heather did arrive at school that day. But then the bullies saw her and purposely took her down to that room. 
something went on, and, uh, well, she didn't make it. Afterwards, after trying to clear up their tracks, they decided to use some of the materials that were in that room to remodel it, and just build a wall covering it. Tyson, the other person who was investigated at the time, and was also suspected to be in that room, used to work part-time as a contractor. So, the story is plausible. About a week later, Heather's parents buried her remains. And after that, Heather never haunted the school hallways again. Maybe Carmen was right, and Heather needed to be found to rest in peace. But I also think she needed revenge before going away forever. I, uh, well, I stopped working at the school about seven months after that. Victor came back and I decided to move over to a different town. But sometimes when I go back to my hometown to visit my dad, I feel like I should visit Heather. But I also think that she's better off just resting.